So, uh, uh, my name is Blaze. Uh, I've been a trader for around uh, three years now. Uh, I've been I do a lot of everything, inter- but uh, like I primarily see myself, unlike others in this uh, mentorship, as someone who is better in positional options rather than swing. Even though I uh, do uh, do swing trading here and there. So uh, before we start, I just wanted a quick uh, like general idea of what do you guys do uh, intraday trading or positional option trading? Anybody here? Or is this your first session about it? Anyone can answer. Um, I mean, I do in intraday option trading, but not positional. Okay. What about others? Hi, I'm into intraday equity trading. I don't do options. Okay, fair enough. Still intraday. Uh, in the end, it's charts. Uh, what about others? Only two people are speaking, so I just want more answers. I just do swing trading on equities. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, actually, what I had planned for this uh, was trading systems, uh, which is uh, one of the primary ways to trade options. So, someone who said he trade, uh, you trade options, what what does your day look like? Like, how do you do it actually? Can you guide me through? Like, what is your basic starting of the day? How do you decide what to buy, what to sell, what strategy to go for? Uh, I basically see if the markets are overbought and try to sell uh, out of the money options, which are basically one or two percent above uh, above the price. Okay. Uh, so. Like, do you have, uh, do you track any metrics for that or do you just trade on that one index? Like, do you track your trades usually? Yeah, I do. But like, my basic criteria is to like, uh, find any kind, any sort of like various divergence and get on that trade. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what I basically do uh, is price action. Uh, but I, I have a system for it, which uh, I plan to share today. So, uh, something like what you said, but a little bit more formalized, uh, like, so, and based on which uh, I will also be tracking metrics of the system. So, uh, what I basically do uh, is I will have a bunch of systems, which I will be executing based on whether the conditions are met or not. So, uh, I call them trading systems. It's a widely used term, actually. So, which are basically uh, a previous occurrence in a market which has been validated. Okay. So, a good part of intraday trading is actually about not letting your emotions control you and letting the logic control you. So, if you're uh, into intraday, even swing, swing, you can say like two weeks, three weeks swing is kind of like positional trading. Uh, a good way to go about it is to have systems instead of doing it by lo- uh, like, you know, just intuition. So, that's what, uh, so what I plan to do on this session was to guide you through what a trading system should look like. And uh, in the uh, at the end of the session, help you uh, like guide you through implementing a system that I have recently implemented and I'm using right now. So uh, let's start on that. So uh, the first few minutes of this is going to be a bit of theory. So you'll have to bear with me, but helping you to understand wh- how to build a system actually. Okay. So uh, going forward, what's a good system? So what a good system basically is a. Uh, particular set of events that you're executing, which has a good enough success rate for which I personally consider any system with a less than 80% of success rate needs refinement over it. And a system which which limits your losses. These two are the conditions that are used to define a good trading system. So limits your losses basically means that when the trade goes south, you had a good stop loss, but that stop loss was good enough that it was not hit in the in case the trade has a pullback. So these are two conditions for I personally use for a good system. Uh, so I'm going to go over the theory a bit fast, otherwise it will become very uh, tiresome. Uh, we will come back to all of this. Uh, but if you have any doubts in understanding any term, you can get back to me then and there. Okay, don't uh, wait for uh, later questions. So, all right. So a good system will basically be 80%, uh, at least 80% success rate. And uh, when the losses come, the stop loss is at a good place. So uh, that comes to evolution and we'll see how uh, a system is actually prepared. So a system will con- consist of three parts. It will be a premise, it will be a validation, and then it will be the execution. So premise is basically uh, where you know that your system is in play. So not every system will be valid for, okay, yeah. Someone said something. 
Okay. Um, I'll continue. So, uh, system is basically three parts: a premise, validation, and execution. I said. So, a premise is basically when you when it means that your system is in play. So, uh, your system might be for a downtrending market. Your system might be for an uptrending market. Your system might be for a ranging market. So, whatever it is, uh, the condition that starts it is called the premise. So, when you're building an uh, actual trading system, you you see some pattern getting repeated, or you see some uh, some things that are happening repeatedly. The first thing you need to determine is like what is the premise for you to consider there as a like uh, an indication. The second is validation. So, validation is basically when you. Uh, your set of rules are confirming that okay the system is uh, like valid here so premise was that system has started validation means that the system is like it has reached a point where you can look for an entry like the system is a valid it's a set of events that has happened in the past and now it can happen again so an execution is when you get the entry so every system every good system will usually have an entry so uh, that's what it basically means so uh there are two kinds of systems that come into play again. So one is a TI back system, and another is intuition back systems. So TI back systems is what I do. I don't prefer intuition back systems, which are basically uh, TI uh, intuition back systems are basically systems where you look back into the memory and you see like, okay, this represents some pattern that happened one month back, or this is same as that date in the past. I don't usually do that because I don't find them reliable, and stop losses are really hard. In it. So what I go for is TI back systems. So what that means is you will have a premise which will be based on what you observe. Your validation will be based on technical indicators, which is helpful because you won't let emotions control your exit and entry. So uh, that is a very prime. Uh, I think if you have done any kind of intraday trading, you know that uh, like when you see a live chart and you see a profit uh, profit loss chart, uh, emotions take over everything else, right? So for the very very case, I, I go for TI back system, and that's what I'll be uh, telling right now. Uh, in the system that I'm going to show. So uh, another uh, important point is that uh, every system is should keep evolving. So no system is valid forever. So uh, like any system that you start two years back might not be valid after COVID. So any system that you start after COVID might not be valid before COVID and uh, like the COVID crash that came in March. So we'll come to those things also, how to define them uh, once we go to the charts. But uh, this is just some basic pointers that uh, you should have in your mind. So... Uh, Okay, tracking a system, uh, we will come back to. Uh, I want to go to a chart now to build it. Um, okay, so or else we'll cover it. So uh, after you have a system, your first step is to like improve a system. For that, you need to track two metrics. One is success rate, and there is the occurrence of the premise. So if it's a premise that occurs once in six months, uh, it's not really a system worth chasing. Uh, so. Those, both of those things you need to track separately for every system. And I would suggest you track it for every version of the uh, trade, uh, system that you have. So if you, let's say you add an indicator after three trades, track the success rate after the indicator as well, so that you know, uh, you can compare in by looking in the past as to what is the success rate now as to it, as to what it was before. So, um, and the second thing is the last thing is to diversify the systems. So have a system, don't uh, like a lot of people I see. So uh, have systems just for, an uptrending market. They won't have uh, a system for a ranging market. They won't have a system for a downtrending market. So it's it's better to go for a like diversified system so that you don't you're not left at a place where the market situation is not matching any any of your systems. So a, a good example of this to go for is to uh, like have a system for range. Start with a system for ranging days. If you have a system for ranging days, you'll be covering a lot of. Uh, like you, you'll cover like twenty percent of the days that are actually happening in market. A lot of them are just ranging. So that's uh, that's about the theory of it. So I know a lot of I I uh, skim through a lot of it primarily because uh, most of uh, it won't be understood without an example. So we'll go to an example now of uh, something that uh, like I have developed over the past eight months, like one of the systems that I've developed the past eight months, and how I went it uh, like took it to eighty percent success rate. Okay. Okay. So, uh, all right. So the system that I'm going to be defining is over Nifty. Okay. So Nifty. Uh, anybody wants to comment on the past eight months of Nifty? What do you think the overall trend has been for Nifty? Uh, uh, like from it's April. Um, extremely. Extremely mm -hmm. bullish. Exactly right. It's, it's extremely bullish. Uh, so, uh, and it's, it was quite a surprise to a lot of people because so much sell-off happened. 
So, uh, how? Uh, so, b- we're going to be analyzing that bullishness, and we'll try to see what uh, what can we get from that. Uh, we'll try to pick up some interesting days. We will look into them deeply. We will pick up some uh, important days that we think are uh, worth it. This so this is all that I did a few months back. I'm just going to be recalling it through, okay, for you guys to see how that system evolved. So uh, let's start with March. So March COVID crash happened, okay. So uh, an event like this is actually a very good thing for a trader, okay. You can see my mouse pointer right when I move it because I'll be using it to point to certain things. Yes. Okay. So. A crash like COVID is actually a good thing for a trader. Uh, in primarily because uh, if you see, so this is a day. Uh, I just shift to a daily chart. So this is a daily chart on Nifty. Okay. Now uh, in this, you see that Nifty in April was at eight thousand almost, and it went till fifteen thousand, uh, and that's almost like seven thousand points worth of gain. Compared to before April, b- between March and April, it fell around four thousand in just a matter of days. So, uh, like, if you see the comparison of percentage change, this takes away. This is way too huge compared to the rest of the chart, right? So, we call this. Uh, you can call this movement a defining event in the market. So, what I mean by that is, uh, a defining event will be a, like a mark in the market where nothing before might be valid now. Okay. So, how it is good for a trader is that, uh, like. It helps you build new systems quickly because you don't really have much data to analyze, right? Like, so if I want to build a system after COVID crash, I just have April to Feb to analyze. I don't have to analyze years of data. So this this is kind of good for new traders also who are getting into the market. You don't have to uh, like go back way too much in the far. So sometimes what happens is if you backtest something five years back, it might not be valid now, and you won't be able to tell why. So uh, for anyone who's who's gonna make a system after this. I would suggest you do it after COVID only. Like you can just look after COVID, and that will be enough. So uh, around July to August, uh, like how how this system started was, I had realized that uh, after the real uh, a little bit of turbulent eff- effects until May, the market was entering into a fairly bullish run, but it used to have these sharp pullbacks, which will get covered in a very 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 great time. Like it will be covered very quickly. So if you see this one, uh, this was the first one that I noticed proper, which was after a bullish run uh, around June twelfth, which had a downfall, which was traced back by a very good green candle. The same thing happened in July. It it was a small downturn, which was traced back very quickly. The same thing happened in August. It was traced very quickly. Uh, in September, it fell. It was traced very quickly in a very good bullish run. We had almost like six days of continuous bullish runs. So uh, at this point, like. You realize that okay, there is something happening in the market that is having a pattern to it, and now we need to define it in a more, in a better sense so that we can make a system out of this. So, what is the starting point here? Can anyone tell me? Like, how do you go about analyzing this? Everybody got the problem statement right. What are we trying to do here? Uh, can you repeat the statement once more? Okay, so. Uh, Starting from after May, we uh, like up till September. Like back in back in September, I noticed that after after May to June, the market was in a fairly bullish run, but it will have these small corrections, which will get corrected in like less than a day or in less than like half the time of what it took for the correction. For example, this one there was a three days of correction, which was rolled back in like one big big green candle. On uh, in August, there was this small correction. Which got rolled back, and uh, some of them were intense, some of them were not intense. So July, if you see, there was a small correction which got pumped up really hard. September, there was a correction which got pumped up really hard. So, uh, and what I mean by pumped up really hard is again there was a correction that started near, but then it again shot up in a very big run. I like right now. It's a very crude problem statement, and our like the job of the trading system will be to actually go into it and we'll try to analyze this more. So uh, everybody got the problem statement right. Like, what is the like starting point? Like, we're we're trying to solve here. We're trying to determine what causes this result. We're trying to get a system running around it. Okay, is it clear till here? Because yep, yep, global warming. Yeah, yeah, it is clear. Global warming. Let's. Uh, so anybody wants to like if anybody has uh, worked on analyzing this be- uh, stuff like this before 
can anyone tell me what what is a good starting point for these kind of situations how do you begin an, uh, analyzing something like this it's a very straightforward answer actually it is and that will be the start of your 90% of your trading systems is support and resistances okay so drawing trend lines right uh not trend lines support and resistances right now okay so trend lines i'm not really a fan of actually i think uh, i'm i won't use trend lines as an indicator actually okay uh, so i will go for a uh, math based indicator like uh, rsi and msci and all but i won't use trend lines in general okay so but i will uh, support the resistances where you start okay so the first day of this uh, the first significant day so this was all turbulence due to the event that i said so we i ignored all of this the first clear day of a correction with a pullback was this one correct so uh, what we'll do is uh, we will first draw support and resistance for this so what i usually do is i will use uh, the one day chart to uh, check for support and resistances so can anybody tell me support and resistances here like what will be a, a, in this range i want to no support and resistances in this graph try, around 10000 would be a good resistance 9000 will be a good support yeah 9000 will be a good support but it's a bit far from our uh, number this 10000 uh, can you reason why 10000 will be a good support uh, i mean there's a peak here i get it but you can try it would be try. a good it would be a good resistance because when we look at the first retracement it mm. happens at that particular level for example this particular candle which is on may so if you see look at may and 10000 there is a retracement mm. here yes correct so i think that would be a good resistance here and yeah so uh, it's actually correct i was just asking the reasoning behind it so uh, i i would consider this actually as a good so again support and resistances for me are zones basically uh, they are not def- if you say 10000 they are not defined at 10000 it's a zone around that area uh, which if breached is the problem okay or if is breached is the uh, point okay if it is in that zone we don't care so this would be a good point any other lines that we can draw here what about this 9500 500 yes it could also be a good support it can be right like it has uh, like broken once it got rejected twice from there so uh, and the in covid cash also it re- retraced to that point so we can even take that so on first day uh, uh, so i think these three are fine for this so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, do the same for any other day of interest okay uh, so another day of interest like all uh, what i see is this september crash others were not as significant uh, and like uh this one did not get retraced at all so we can consider it part of the overall crash this one was not a great retracement this one was not a not a big enough correction so september is the next one so uh what are the support and resistance line, resistance lines here i think this will be one correct yes this could be one yeah so uh this will be another one mhm and this will be another one so uh that be three lines here and uh and we will take another date into the future so uh for this one i actually took november 1st okay so i i am preparing from my journal actually is hard to remember all of this in the end so uh this is what all i have logged in the journal at that time so and uh, we are talking about this correction here so uh, we'll quickly draw levels here also so this is a good support levels good support level um and nothing much in there okay so uh, that's our starting points now so uh, we'll go back to the first day and try to like so one common thing we have noticed in all of them is that they have bounced back from a support level correct so that is uh, that is a good sign that you're on the right track if there is if if this basic check fails that means uh, something like we we have drawn this mostly uh, we are trying to find a pattern which is not there or we are trying to see something into the uh, past which is not which was not really correlated so uh, all of them bounce back from pretty significant support levels so if you see actually clearly they all fell back from their previous corrections high points okay so bounce back so like if this was the last correction they bounce back from here 
if this was the last correction it bounced back from here in this case it went down more so i'm just trying to uh, tell you how to identify patterns like how to look about it so uh, i'm just telling you the th thought pattern so for example this one two out of three times it hit what i'm saying right now like it bounced back from the previous corrections high so uh, this is how you will get an idea as to where to take the system to so uh, going forward now i will uh, after this point it's, be it's a better thing to move on to a smaller time uh, chart so i'll uh, usually go to an hourly chart to look at how the days performed in general okay the days of interest so uh, that for now the days of interest are june 12th september 24th and november 1st so we'll go to june 12th uh, by the way uh, what so the fact that the market is moving back fr sharply from a correction that means a correction is your premise okay like this we had a theory discussion right premise validation and execution so our premise right now we're trying to determine is like is correction a premise for this uh like what do you call it this system now what we're trying to do is find a validation of it like so if in future a correction occurs we know that we can we might be able to implement this system okay so for the same thing we're going to be building validation for now so uh all right uh this was june 12th okay oops yeah june 12th so uh, an interesting day gap down and it closed above uh, whatever it opened uh, like whatever was the previous day closed that is a very fairly bullish uh, day on a downtrend a uh, few days correction so uh, that is again gives you an insight like what uh, like it should uh, every system when you explore more it it will probably some of these small things that i have noticed this is, this is not part of the overall theory but uh, it will give you signs where uh, it it there is a technical indicator there which can tell you this basically this is a very weird day right for the whole day that was going on and it actually marked even though the market fell the next day it was ranging the next day it marked the uh, beginning of this whole uptrend that went ahead so what we're trying to capture is this day itself this is what I, this is what we're trying to do. like if this occurs in the future can we capture it so we'll go to our next day of interest and see uh, how it looks there everybody is on the pace right like nobody is feeling lost right if you are then tell me because uh, like i'll try to explain a bit more no 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 we're following it very good i'm following it very good okay uh others come on more than one people can come yeah i'm fine following. too okay so uh all right we come to our next interest day september 24th we see again another on a downtrending day suddenly a very bullish day right so uh, again something tells us that what something changed here which caused this to happen so we are trying we, uh, again our aim becomes to capture what changed and and we actually don't care what changed we we want to capture whatever is changing that's actually the aim if you can capture whatever is changing that is enough so uh, and the last one of our interesting uh, days was number 1st and uh, here we see again a different story but uh, it was again a fairly bullish day after a long drawdown uh, so if you see here the first candle was red but it managed breaking it again so again a fairly bullish day not the ones we have seen before but again the correction here was bigger so that is kind of expected also so uh, again it, it does not invalidate our system fully we still have something to go for so uh, we'll return to the first day now uh, to see where can we proceed from now so uh, like we are trying to capture why the market turned so can anyone give me any ideas as to how to check that like what indicator what like if you can name an indicator good enough uh, that is actually good but if you can just tell me what to track that is also good enough like how do you track this like has anybody ever, has anybody here actually tried this what i'm doing here like has anybody analyzed the market like this before i think one can use a momentum indicator maybe for example if the market is continuously mm -hmm. falling the momentum would continually start going yeah. down but if it okay. suddenly rises the slope of the momentum indicator would you know from negative to turn positive okay uh yes that that's correct okay so that one momentum indicator is actually a good way to go about here so uh just one, can you can you see this notification or like do i need to tell about it so i apparently zoom has a 40 minute limit so uh i will restart the meeting after this if it gets over okay yeah, so everybody you, can uh, yeah yeah tell me if there are more than 3 people in a zoom meeting uh, it will uh, 
close off after okay. 40 minutes yeah see the discord problem is really a bitch man but okay fine uh, if it closes i'll decide again so everybody can join quickly okay so yeah momentum indicator uh, is a good choice here yes okay so but uh, so let's let's try one name uh, do you know a momentum indicator actually let's try it actually uh. RSI, MACD. Yeah, RSI. Yeah, a pretty standard uh, one, right? So uh, I, so everybody has their preferences. I prefer RSI at seventy thirty. Okay, uh, for especially for Indian markets, uh, because Indian markets tend to not really go into really oversold or really overbought territory. They, uh, because mostly Indian institutions play it safer in it, like compared to other countries. They don't have a choice. There are a lot of regulations. So seventy thirty seems like a good uh, cut for me. so we see here that the market was uh, what do you, so anybody knows how to read rsi yeah if it's below 30 you can say it's oversold if it's above 70 you can say it's overbought and mm-hmm. it's ripe for correction but it's not always like that so you have to look yeah. for the previous trend as well yeah exactly so uh, on the day of this opening uh, like here you see rsi was giving an oversold reading correct but is that yes. enough like in the next correction Will you take that trade? Will you take that trade? No, no right. it would be a yeah. bit risky. Yeah, it will be very risky actually. So RSI is not really uh, the ultimate bible, right? No indicator is. No indicator is the ultimate bible in these cases. So uh, can you just give me a second? hello uh yeah so uh, someone was at the door okay so uh, where were the indicators right yeah rsi so yeah no indicator on its own will give you uh like uh the ultimate signal right otherwise it will be anybody can do it they can just open an indicator run on the trade but uh, it does tell mm-hmm. us that uh there was overselling on this day so uh it's we'll just validate it for the other days um uh, let's see if the if it's the same premise there So September twenty fourth comes here. So um, again here, we see again it was in the oversold territory, but again not enough signal to go ahead. So uh, and in the third one also it will probably be in oversold territory because uh, as uh, the market was in a correction and it was at the bottom most point, correct. So it's probably going to be there. So RSI is valid here, but it's not the only reason you can go ahead for. Correct. Hmm. Okay. Uh. So I'm just trying to show you number, but also, in just in case. Yeah. So again, it was in oversold territory a day before. It was actually recovering. Uh. So anybody knows actually what it means when the market sets the same low, but RSI shows a upper, uh, like has a higher peak. I think uh, it, it would be a divergence. Market is <coughs> gaining some strength. Yeah, it's it's a bullish sign. Yes, correct. So, yeah. Uh, so all three places RSI was valid, but it's not enough, right? So, uh, we'll keep that into mind, and we'll go back to our uh, table as to what else can we do. Okay. So, uh, if you notice, all of these days were followed by huge candles, and on the day itself, they were pretty big candles. Correct. So, market was actually pretty volatile. every candle was uh, tracing a lot of uh, price in general so what we need is an indicator actually here which takes into account the volume uh, the movement of the candle as well as the supports around anybody knows a indicator like that here okay uh, so forget the support forget the support we need an indicator okay hmm. a momentum indicator so momentum indicator is valid here that's the approach here that's correct so but we need a momentum indicator which takes the volatility of the candle into account so rs rs of the candle mm-hmm. as in like the candle opened here so for example take this candle this candle's yeah. closing price wasn't really difference before the candle right before its previous candle so a, a mm. indicator which just takes the closing price will not account for this whole wick correct but there are indicators 
which will do that okay which will take the whole thing into account and the reason uh, i have which one viva uh is it here how would that work yeah, if it is taking average then how will it uh, count this way v v w it would go over there uh the, there was there uh yep 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 you just v wap v wap okay all right ha so uh okay v wap might work here i have to see so v wap is not an indicator i use uh, much but it can work do you know the formula for it actually uh it's basically like a volume weighted average price so it doesn't ha, okay. consider the so, only the price but also the volume uh, yeah, in which so, the candle has formed uh, but this is nifty so uh volume is an issue here right we don't have volume data right. for nifty we have for nifty you future. can use a future chart yeah you can use a future yeah. chart but we again we don't want to uh, like if it can be done within the chart it's better right so we don't want to refer futures for a trade we future do think future is correct but our our our, our uh, problem solving here should be about making a system that is as simple as possible if possible only two indicators if possible only three indicators if possible only three lines okay to track so uh, someone uh, when you were suggesting we have someone asked a question how can it do that do that right what was the question again can you repeat i was just asking that uh, you were talking about an indicator which is going to consider the swing in line and since yeah. the word average is comes in then if you are taking an average then you cannot show these kind of spikes in it right no uh, but you can it depends on what you are taking the average of right so uh like a good example what uh, if you take the average of the candle high minus candle low pi 2 for example okay i have practically given the indicator away actually but uh, i am looking if an if i can get an indicator that takes the period high minus period low by 2 in its average that is a good enough right it will take the volatility of the candle into account it won't just take the closing price so if i take that this candle's uh, average will come here where i'm pointing my uh, that line is there so that that gives me at least an idea of the divergence right even though that it was uh, there was some uh, like break there so that's what i mean when i say i want a, uh, i wanted an indicator here that takes that into account so anybody knows an indicator like that it's a very famous indicator actually Yeah, can you go to studies so we can check out yeah, if we can sure, find yeah. out that is that is a fair thing okay uh, i have a chart here yeah okay here um uh, all right so there you go like right. nobody knows all of them even i don't know all of them okay so that's huge but uh, it's good to know like one of every type okay so rsi is the momentum in hmm is it atr no uh whenever it comes to a situation like this where you need the support and resistance to be considered as well as the basically it's called the period okay so this whole thing is called a period this this one very good indicator called ichimoku clouds okay so it's that that uh, the reason it is because it takes a 9 and 26 moving average but it takes the period high minus period low by 2 as the average count so and this is uh, the difference like people will try to apply ichimoku clouds in normal scenarios it won't work because it is meant to work only in cases like this okay where the candles vol uh, candles volatility also matters like so only only closing price is not the answer you need to consider that so ichimoku cloud is what is a very good indicator valid here we we are not saying that it will tell the downtrend of it okay but it it it, it is valid uh, like it might be a good application here okay have we got the point so how many of you know the indicator actually here no never heard of it yes. like have you ever heard of the indicator i have heard of it but i never used it okay yeah. uh, so same here i'll do one thing after this session uh, i'll give you Uh, all the indicators that i use particularly for so i i told you right i'll have at least one indicator for every type of thing i want to track so rsi for just momentum ichimoku clouds for momentum when i want the supports uh, when when i want the support zones as well as the uh, period of the candle considered so uh, i will share that in the session uh, if you have any doubt regarding regarding the indicators themselves you can you can ask me then so uh, i will go over ichimoku cloud once since you guys uh, don't are uh, not familiar with it so 
Ichimoku um, cloud is a basically leading indicator. Uh, a leading indicator is basically it will plot into the future. Okay, so RSI will plot till the present only, right? So whatever is the ne- correct candle right now, it will plot till there. But Ichimoku cloud will plot beyond that also for 26 periods. Okay, so what it consists of is a ni- uh, so any average that Ichimoku cloud takes will be done by the period high minus period low by two. Correct. Okay. So uh, it'll have a nine nine period average. It'll have a twenty six period average. It will have average of both of these nine average and twenty six period average, and then it'll have a fifty two period average. Okay, four lines in total. Should I repeat? Or like you can actually Google it in the end. So and it doesn't in the end you don't need to know the exact numbers. Okay. So we'll just try to apply it here and see if we can find something. Uh, of interest. So uh, don't get overwhelmed. It looks a bit uh, like too much at first, this indicator, but it's actually nothing. Okay. So how you go for this indicator is you first delete whatever is not needed. Okay. So uh, the first thing you don't need, uh, for, we don't need right now is the lagging span. It's the fifth line in this indicator. So I'm going to uh, actually turn it white. Okay. So uh, the rest of the things we need, I'll tell you what they are. Okay. So blue is the nine day average. Okay. Uh, the red one is the 26 day average. And this is the first one here is the average of averages. And the last one is 52 week average. And you usually color the area in between them to form the cloud. It's called a cloud red. So uh, how to read the indicator is basically if the price is above this green thing, it's a positive sign by the indicator. If the price is below the red thing, uh, below the cloud, it's a bearish sign. Uh, so this is all the basics about the indicator. We, you should know this in general, but uh, that's not what we're trying to do. We, we, we are trying to use the indicator for its conversion and baseline, not primarily the cloud, but that also we might end up using. But what we needed are these two lines because we needed the, uh, as I said, right, we need the period to be considered instead of the closing price. So uh, if you see this day here, okay, so uh, at this point, it's better to go down to a, since we're analyzing uh, for every candle, we'll go down to a, a lower time frame. So uh, five minutes is what I usually use. That's the minimum I use. If I don't find anything in five minutes, I will find in 10 minutes like that. So a starting point is five minutes. If you can find something in that, that's uh, the best thing for you. So uh, I'll go back to the date. God, mm-hmm. it is so bad. It is. Where is it? Ah, here it is. Okay. So, uh, anytime, okay, uh, first of all, this, so no matter what indicator, if a nine day average crosses a 26 day average, that is a very what sign? Bullish or bearish? Bullish. Bullish sign, right? So, uh, correct, because your short term trend is going over uh, your long term trend. So, all right, uh, so let's come here and see what happens. Okay, so the day the market opens, uh, it fell accordingly. That is acceptable. So, but there was a crossover event here. Okay, after which, which I also noticed one thing is that uh, the price pierced the cl- cloud itself. So I told you that the cloud will act as a support and resistance itself. So uh, whenever uh, the price try to tries to break through the cloud, as you can see here, it will try to get pushed down. So again, this is not always valid. Otherwise, this indicator will be the God level thing, right? So, but right now we're trying to see if it fits into our premise. Okay. So as soon as it crosses and the cloud was breached, the market, uh, like that was a good indicator here to go long here for according to an indicator and which is what we end up seeing was happening. So uh, the same thing we'll try to capture in the next date, which was I think 25th of September, right? It was, yes, it was, okay. So 24th of September. Mm-hmm. 
is there a way to skip in kite actually i don't know why i decided to do this on the kite i tried i decided to choose kite actually because it had no modifications as such so i thought i'll start with the plane chart is it there to skip to a date no you cannot do that in kite Now, is there any specific reason why don't you use uh, trading view chart on kite i i do use uh, you can use trading view chart on kite also okay no i use trading view for normally but i wanted to i wanted a fresh chart where i didn't want to disturb anything that i had so i thought i'll do it in kite charts and i saw that the indicators were here to show okay uh let's go back to it now i reached the date so uh the day we're looking for was this one Twenty fifth of September, which was the day we saw, and we again see that there was an average, uh, like the moving average, uh, not the moving average, the nine day average, uh, went up and it pierced the cloud again. So again, two or two cases are uh, verified here. So uh, we'll try the third case finally, which was November first. is there a day where nine day moved over or crossed over 26 day and the trend pierced to the cloud Doubt but it well. still yeah. we'll see we'll come to after that after a while it went down yeah that what that's what we'll come to that okay so that, those are the cases which we have to verify after we have a system okay so right now what we're doing uh, that's a good question actually so that's part of your system building process so after let's say uh, the third day it matches also okay now you have something which works like based on the limited data set we have we only have 3 days we are analyzing right next we'll see uh, on the days it does not work okay so uh, if we can find days like that then then that's when our premise becomes important that we we'll only trust this when the premise is satisfied correct so there will definitely be days like this so if you can see here actually in front of you only it pierced the cloud it went back in right it pierced the cloud it went back in so in these cases you you can say that in the long term it went ahead only okay but where's your stop loss right so uh, let's say um, in this strategy i'll be placing a stop loss on the last low that was set by the market so if i if i actually take the indicator here and i went up long i would have set my stop loss here only which would have been broken down correct so this is uh, by the premise is actually important so you know when to enter okay so we'll come to that's what our aim is we are trying to refine the strategy into something that is valid no matter what okay so uh let's just quickly look at that date so it was i think 1st november uh what was the date november just hmm it was november 1st okay but this was not the day we were looking for uh just again i lost the date actually it was number second okay oh god <laughs> so uh like take my word for it it is valid there i have to go back fully again take it so if you actually uh, if you have charts in front of you if you go and check on number second also the same thing will happen okay so uh, since this is a system that i have already developed right so i remember that so uh, now we have something here okay it's still not complete uh, it's it's very crude actually but we have something we have an indicator which is giving us the right signal every time now the question is when to take that right so uh, now what we'll do uh, is we'll one actually, second sorry to interrupt you uh, before you started with the sichimoku cloud you were discussing about that uh, uh, wick thing on the one hour chart but then i think we did not discuss it completely can you go back to that yeah that was a random week actually i just wanted to show a period a uh, difference between period and closing time but we can go back yeah, yeah but after you put on this uh, indicator you did not discuss that and i was very curious about it so like the you said that it was chosen because of that actually okay the indicator itself has the information in it right so the reason okay i'll go back over it yeah. again okay. what was so, the information i could not understand okay. so uh now when we were here we were trying to see a momentum we tried rsi it didn't really yes. uh, okay so rsi was valid but rsi on its own is not enough right so we wanted yes. more information so we we are we are looking for another momentum indicator but uh, one thing that you notice in all three of them is that the pullbacks are pretty sharp 
like they're, they're huge, they're very quick pullbacks, right? So uh, the candles are covering almost 100 points, 200 points. Like if you see this candle itself, opened at 547, uh, 9547 and closed at 967. That's 100 points in one hour. So mm. these are uh, candles that I, I, I like, so this is where price action is, right? I feel like that, that will take, that needs to be considered. So I will go for an indicator. I want an indicator that takes the period of the candle instead of the wick of the candle. So that I can, uh, like, so that's because that's what I think is actually valuable here. That's the price action telling me that since it is sharp, I want to capture it. I want the period to be considered. So this candle, I primarily gave an example as to why, uh, the period matters sometimes. Like so, uh, in this candle, closing time from the previous candle isn't really huge. Closing uh, price. So, any indicator which doesn't have it will not have much difference. But a period indicator will have a huge difference. Okay. So, if you see actually the red line uh, and the blue line, you can see that, like it fell quite considerably, and the clouds closed uh, closed after it. The the average is so average closed. So the red cloud was forming means that the market might be going into a downturn. So again, indicator is not valid every time. That's why we are building the system over it. But uh, that's the thing. That's why we went for period here in this particular case. And that's why Ichimoku cloud and not. So uh, uh, another example is what if, if we didn't want to care that what indicator would, would I have gone for here? Correct. Mm. What if I didn't want the period to be considered? I will go for MACD. That's my standard. Like how Ichimoku cloud is with the periods. Okay. The same way, if I don't want period, I just want closing price to be considered, I will go for MACD. Okay. So uh, that's what uh, that indicator list for uh, whatever cases I use, I will share with you guys at the end of the session. So uh, whenever you are trying to analyze you, that, that can be your indicator to fall back to, or you can have your own ones if you prefer someone, something over the other. Okay. So uh, these things kind of pass from like, so I use Ichimoku for period because the person who taught me use Ichimoku for periods. Right. So there are other period indicators also there. It just goes like that. Okay. So, and it has given me fair success in the past. That is also there. So, uh, anything right. else? Uh, shall I proceed ahead? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, we have our uh, initial indication. Uh, now we have to see, uh, like, but again, we can't really take the trade based on this because, uh, as we saw in that example, when I showed you there. Okay. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So, uh, or let's just see the random charts at a bit of random places where we see the same thing happening. Okay. Uh, so, this we go ahead. Let me just move out a little. So, uh, right now, I can't really see. Okay, this is a good example here. So, if you look at the chart, you will find examples on your own of the same thing that we analyzed, it will happen, it can, it should happen in other places where the market will not be going long enough, right? Correct? So, like, basically, 9-day moving average will cross 26-day moving average. The market will pierce the crowd, uh, the cloud, but it might still fall. Correct? We have, uh, like, that example when we saw, someone asked this question, right? For, uh, I'm telling you for that. So, now we need something else to actually support this uh, system to make it more worthwhile, to make it more uh, like believable and strong enough. So right now, for example, uh, I can tell that if I trade on this, it's like 50-50 right now. The indicator might be there, but it, if it is the right one, we don't know yet. So what do we do here now? Like at this point, we have two indicators which are giving a picture, but both of them on, on their own are not reliable in that segment. So what do we do here? Maybe combine them. That's, that's the obvious way, right? You combine them for a signal. Okay. So uh, if you go for June, so um, again, I'll go back to five minutes again because that's where uh, we saw Ichimoku Cloud's divergence. So this is just about system. We'll also uh, try to talk about how to implement the results if time permits because I just say it's an hour already. <laughs> Okay, so anybody remembers what RSI was showing actually? It was showing oversold a day before, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm, yes. Changed its slope into the moderate territory as the green candle formed. Yeah. So uh, 
actually uh, so again this chart is really giving me a cry right now okay so probably i'll post screenshots uh, till till i go there so the system that uh, like the next step that forms will be that if you notice on the, all the three days june 12th september 24th and november 1st okay you will see that the rsi was in pretty oversold territory just the day before just the day before okay so it will be crossing around 75 to uh, like it will be touching 75 for all three days so at this point uh, like now i have rsi indicating a day before that 70, uh, 70 to 75% oversold plus i have the uh, like i so i have the divergence happening like uh, sorry crossover happening between 9 day and 26 day and i have a third thing that the cloud should be pierced so i have three indicators uh, mimicking a pattern over three different days over months correct so this is a point of time when you can start actually paper trading this or actual trading this that is up to you but this is a time when you start testing it in the live market okay so uh, with this one i got a little lucky because uh, the next so again going over the system okay first thing premise there should be a correction of there should be a correction in market we don't do this so this system won't work in uh, a trending market ranging markets it will only work in a correction in a one day chart okay so again going forward i have refined that also like correction is a vague term here so how much correction uh, is also can be defined by looking into these three days and trading this strategy in the future so i said right uh, sorry system in the future so system strategy is again the same thing but uh, again i said said the thing like right, the system should keep evolving so this is what i mean by that so once you have the basic thing ready you evolve it into the you go into the details and mod, uh, like refine every part of it what is the correction you define everything in there so uh, that's our premise a correction should happen in the market our validation is basically rsi should be oversold uh, the day before there should be a crossover and the cloud should get pierced and that's when we take a long trade there okay so based on this system i traded this i decided to trade this since i had this by uh, november end i decided to trade it in the next correction to see how it works like how how it looks in the real market okay and i saw uh, like uh, december had a huge correction actually uh if anybody remembers that i think nifty fell from around uh, in in 13k range and it fell uh let's quickly check it out ah uh, here it is okay so same thing uh, so but this time it was a bit different because it was uh, it had a few ranging days so we need to uh, i need to see the system holds so how this will work is Uh, i will quickly add the rsi here also okay uh, so once this market was sold i got an overbought trading here okay then uh, i was waiting for it to cro- uh, for the crossover to happen it didn't happen here it didn't happen here it happened here but by the time rsi was already like uh, rsi had already recovered for that right so i did not take this trade when it pierced the crowd here i did not take this trade because i was expecting it to crash it didn't crash correct so uh, that was a sign that the system still needs a bit of refinement okay so that's when the next part of it comes into picture so uh, now now how do you go about it now you have two indicators you thought it will work but it didn't work right so uh, even though uh, like i could have gone long here it was still a risk to reward was still very decent because market was already in a very big uptrend but i still didn't go because i had a system which i had to test so how do you go from here like what will be your next step now anybody can guess here like how how the same thing like we combine two indicators right so what if both combining both indicators fails what are the next steps possible remember the fact that we are trying to minimize we are trying to keep it as simple as possible okay even though in the end the strategy will be decent complex but you still want to strive for simpleness otherwise otherwise it will be very complex so what are other ideas that can be done here just try is is this no wrong answer just try like if you are faced with this information and if you have to refine the system what will you do you can add a uh, moving average okay but we already have a uh, 9 day moving average right yeah the moving average we already have so Uh, you can use rsi divergence yes correct okay we can use rsi divergence or uh, like 
instead of adding a divergence you can just see the divergence in the chart also so uh, what i mean by that is okay uh, here if you see this okay uh, the market set a lower low right twice but rsi did not so we discussed this earlier in the session right that is a very bullish sign correct so instead of going for the oversold condition in my system i changed it to this like it can either be oversold or rsi could be showing a bullish indication it need not be just oversold everybody got the point right like you see here market set a lower low twice but mm. both of the times yeah. rsi had a higher peak that is a good bullish indicator there so and it happened a day before the like it happened on the day i think right yeah so it happened on the day but before the candle so this is the next step for the system right so i decided to do this and again you can go back and validate on the other days uh, it will be like it will if it all falls in line we go ahead so uh, the same thing happened i decided to include this in my system so the system basically became becomes nine day moving average cross so premise is again correction should be there second nine day moving average should cross the 26 day moving average in the ichimoku cloud because we want periods third the cloud should be pierced because that acts as a, i told you that right, the cloud will act as a resistance in case of when it is red so the cloud should pierce and rsi should be showing a bullish trend or it should be like uh, over in the oversold conditions so based on this i traded again in the january correction okay so which was the correction from 24 to 30th uh, which was uh, so again that was again a test of the system because uh, the correction was pretty huge right so we come back here um no 20 26 <laughs> aha uh-huh. okay here it is so uh, the graph looks smaller because the scale just uh, shrunk since it was a very big steep fall rate so again uh, it went here it had some false leading hopes okay but if you see here the market set a lower low right so, and then peers so i did not enter a trade here we are looking for uh, like a rsi strength indicator also for the bullish run the uh, that's an example of when your system your premise was valid but your validation was not correct your validation wasn't there okay the second uh, then the next day this opportunity came okay so um rsi was again in oversold territory like it was almost touching this uh it there was a crossover event here and then the market pierced the cloud and i went long here this is the first time i traded with the system uh, like based on uh, like decent amount of money sometimes i'll trade with like a uh, little money just to see if the system works or not so uh, since money gives you that uh, i believe that paper trading uh you can let your emotions take over because you you're not really worried right so this is the first time i put the system to check and it any paid off dividends in the end right because uh, there was a huge uh, rise the next day that got amplified probably because of the finance minister speech but the same system held true here so uh this is where the strategy is at now i'm still refining the strategy it's like it's a pretty recent strategy that's why i actually remember how it uh, went about in building but this is an example of a trading system so it basically i have like 15 premises 15 to 20 premises like this okay this one so premise need not be just that it should be a correction it can be that an all time high is touched again uh, it can be that the market should be ranging for 2 3 days continuously premise can be anything okay it's just to uh, your creativity to see patterns there okay uh, to catch some uh, like to catch something that is occurring continuously when something happens okay is everybody uh, here till now Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so now that we have this uh it's up to you what you do for trading in the end though. So uh like you can go for naked covered calls here okay uh by covered orders you can actually uh, so I I think went for a uh spread, bull spread here since uh that was I my stop loss in this strategy is still not well defined. So uh I will have a stop loss usually at the last uh lower uh like lowest point of the uh, since since this is a strategy to catch reversals uh for this i'll have the stop loss here but that is in my books that is not a great stop loss because uh, a good stop it can be hit in a pullback in a hard in a pullback so i will i stay this as a bull spread since uh, that will prevent my losses in case things go south and since this was the first time i was uh, seriously trading this strategy also so 
uh, but if you uh, if you have a strategy that has been going on for a decent time then uh, you can go for just uh, covered naked calls where you don't modify the stop loss uh, you can go for uh, much more uh, other strategies like so not all strategies will give you long long options so some some strategies will give you that the market will be ranging for the next few days you can go and strangle the market in those cases so uh, those kind of things uh, like i will probably cover in another session so uh, since i only have time till 5:30 today so uh, any questions till now like on all of this and i really want to talk about the other part of the session also like managing your intraday account the strategy uh, first when you are looking for the correction you are looking at the daily chart and uh, then these indicators will be on 5 minutes right yeah these indicators will be on 5 minutes uh, but premise will be on the daily chart so okay but actually like when you look at it on the hindsight you can see that okay on 28 we should have been anchoring but uh, this january crash i or like if you can see the chart you can see that rsi has been touching that level of 30 quite many times mm-hmm. so how did you not enter earlier on like maybe 25th that's, or 24th of january ha so okay uh, that's what i said right 25th i explained i think okay so this one i explained right uh, what happened here so the market here first of all uh, it was oversold here okay but when it cross it actually cross back inside the cloud okay so that that takes that is a sign that okay it was not really that strength uh, strength wasn't enough if you see the time it cross properly the 9 day moving average will maintain the bullish strength through, through right so these are the final points in the strategy which are like came for paper trading but uh, uh, another example of this was where the one i showed you actually at that time right uh, here it failed to pierce the cloud properly like only one candle came the second one never came so i did not go ahead at this time okay so uh, there are failed trades also in this strategy okay uh, mm-hmm. so what i told you is the culmination of it but as i told right uh, in the end like you have to track right success rate of the system so uh, if it is above 80% 80% is what you aim for if it is above 70% 75% you will still end up in a profit so no system is going to predict the market forever okay let me try to get you an get you an example of a failed trade actually okay uh, that will probably let me just check my journal Okay, 18 Jan- January looks like one. Where is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is when I actually realized uh, that crossover inside the cloud is a sign that I should not be going ahead. So, I went long here. Okay, and I got stop loss out for the strategy. Okay. So, uh, that was basically because uh, I everything was still valid. Uh, the market was oversold before. uh and i really wanted to test the strategy also it it crossed the moving average it touched it again here which is when i realized that okay that the pullback needs to be strong okay oh, great we're running out of time again so uh this is when this is an example of where the strategy failed and that, that's when i included the fact that it should not cross the crossover should not ha- happen again in the cloud it should carry forward to the piercing of the cloud okay so situations like this is what, how you will improve the system okay so in, at this time i did not trade with money i was just trading with uh, on paper about it like okay this is a point to go long okay no let's adjust the strategy so that's uh, an example of where it is not working right now but that's what right this strategy will evolve over time okay so i think uh, so a- an average time i uh, like it takes me to take a strategy to 80% and above is around one and a half years okay out of which after that the strategy will probably serve well for around one and a half years more but after that it usually market usually changes direction usually one good event will occur by that time all right so this is how it looks uh, in intraday so it's kind of like a misnomer it's it is intraday trading uh, in a way because uh, you will be exiting in an end uh, sometimes your positions will be only for a day sometimes it will be just for a week but uh, the whole build up to it is actually pretty long and that's what enables the success rate of it otherwise success rate is very hard to achieve and if you actually look at it the more data you have the more you will be successful in the predicting things right otherwise like five candles can have any pattern if you want but 500 candles can only have some patterns because there's more data in general right uh, one more question when you said that uh, you take almost one and a half year to build up a strategy so by the time don't you about think about 80% like- about 80% okay 
but uh, like i've heard sometimes that the strategies after a while stop working so has that been a case with you ever it has it has uh, like um, before covid uh, like there was this one strategy i was using for ranging market so if you see before covid right the last 3 months they were pretty uh, ranging only actually they were market was not really able to decide where to go uh, and primarily because Jan- by january i think fear of covid was also coming but i wouldn't right. go for news news much so at those time i had to throw a lot of strategies out the window right so uh, even hmm. like i had to start fresh after covid so uh, but the thing is any strategy that you pick up which it's like a good strategy you pick up will start at 70% success rate if it is starting below that rate that means it is not worth exploring because your ultimate aim is to get it to above 80% right that's when you will make serious money out of it otherwise you will make decent money out of it okay so considering brokerage is also involved so yes uh, that's what and i i will never get a strategy which uh, in the back testing itself is giving me so i only t- uh, told you guys 3 days but uh, in the journal i have anal- analyzed almost 6 days for this strategy okay before starting on it so on those 6 days itself it was giving me around kitna uh, i think around 66% success rate on the initial premise only like which we had right only rsi and the uh, crossover event occurring it was giving me around 66% at that time so that that is a good strategy to develop to 80% because even if i start training that strategy at that time i will still be in profit correct so uh, and over time you refine it to just like you know imp- if the more profit you make the better right that's why you refine strategies so and you don't want to make a loss in the end so uh, a lot of strategies won't see 80% success they will be invalidated before that but the ones that reach 80% success will make you uh, serious money that's what i mean here not all of them will live to see the day but the ones that do uh, they will make you some serious money because 80% success rate is like the dream right so yeah that's uh, for that question uh, what's the general risk to reward ratio for the strategy it depends from strategy to strategy so for this one uh, i would say uh, risk to reward here will be uh, i don't have a target for this strategy right i'm going for a long call usually uh, so when i uh, actually started trading this strategy i didn't have a exit point okay so what i decided to do the exit point was that the correction level right all time high from where it corrected i will take that as the target so risk to reward is pretty decent right since like i think it will be around 1 is to 5 at least for uh, trades that you take by this particular strategy but uh, i would suggest any strategy that is giving less than 1 is to 2 is uh, not worth exploring again so uh, based on a percentage game only right so if you are going for a strategy that is 70% success to turn it into serious money like so you need 1 is to 2 reward ratio otherwise 1 is to 1 will not really earn you much everyone can see the calculation there right so 1 is to 2 is minimum for this it used to be around 1 is to 5 and uh, i think that is also obvious right because our stop loss used to be uh, like if i enter trade here stop loss will be here and exit will be here so you can see it okay so if you go to the correction also it will be looking something like that only i think in the initial correction it was around 1 is to 3 1 is to 2 but then uh, okay yeah, so this is another thing so another strategy that i am exploring right now if you have seen corrections from the last uh, june to this feb you will see that the corrections are growing in intensity right so uh, mostly they'll be uh, like percentage wise as well as absolute so they will definitely go but percentage wise also they're increasing in their intensity so that points to a fact that you can go uh, like what i'm trying to develop the next strategy that is in like around 3 3 4 months old only so i don't trade it yet is that if if the correction meets the previous corrections uh, like depth then you can probably go for a, a short position because it will fall more since we are seeing increasing intensity of corrections you getting my point here so that that is not a strategy yet but i'm just giving you another premise that i'm trying to set up right now so that i'm trying to explore right now do you also have an intraday strategy where you don't use any kind of indicators and just uh no in, so this is a positional strategy correct yeah okay but uh, yeah. same thing there are intraday uh, strategies where there will be uh, like a very simple strategy uh, i can explain right now actually mm something else so intraday will also be some something like this only in the end okay the only difference is see in the end it's just a 
graph right one day graph will the only difference between a one day graph and a five minute graph is that one day graph has more data condensed into it so it is more reliable so intraday strategies uh, will uh, like if if i'm uh, like analyzing five minute charts just for the for just for the day i my strategies will be more strict because i don't have the liberty of trusting a one day chart right as as much as a five minute chart so uh Th- the intraday strategies will look like that. So, uh, like, if I start explaining an intraday strategy, it will take time. If you guys want, I can do the same kind of explanation for one of my intraday strategies probably in the next few next two weeks. If, uh, like, there is interest for that. Yes, How to... there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. So, uh, I'll talk to Energizer. I'll arrange another session. Uh, the same way how we build this positional strategy, we will hmm. build. Uh, we'll we'll see how I build an intraday strategy. Probably I'll share you the ranging market strategy because uh, recently uh, that has been happening a lot. Yes. So uh, uh, how I train ranging markets based. So that strategy is quite well tested. Like uh, and that has been going on. That is one of the strategies that don't change uh, even if COVID occurs because uh, a, a ranging. Uh, if a premise is like a ranging market, a ranging market will occur no matter what, right? So this premise. Most of the time, that is a yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly right. So uh, actually, if you can get strategies that are valid for most of the cases, so I told you right. The uh, second way of uh, tracking your your system is occurrence of the premise. If you can get a uh, strategy whose premise occurs like even twenty percent or thirty percent of the time of a like you know uh, in a time period, that is good enough. That's that's a good strategy because even if you refine a system and it occurs only once in six months, that is not a great thing, right? And that is something yes. for this strategy. A correction will come in once in a month, once in a two month, right? But this strategy was worth exploring because of the risk to reward ratio. It is pretty good, right? So I mean, if there's a one is to five trade, I will take it, right? Easily. So that's, this is the reason I developed this strategy. But otherwise, uh, when it comes to the second metric, this isn't a great strategy for that. So uh, that comes to the fact of diversifying systems, as I said. So. You should have a system in long term. You should aim for a system for everything, like every kind of market, every state of market. You should have a system that you can apply there. There should not be there. Like in my initial days of trading back in 2016, there used to be times when I didn't have anything to do for the market. Like I, I will have a, I will have two strategies for uh, uptrending market, but the market like at that time there was a mid market crash. So market crashed like over a year, very slowly bleeding my strategies out. So. That's when uh, that's when diversifying your systems comes into play. So these are all things that come with time. The more you trade, the more you develop. So like right now, if I have some strategies there because I've been doing it for a while, so uh, it compounds basically, right? So if you have sometimes a strategy will emerge out of two strategies that you have before because you already have spent so much time into it. So these kind of things will uh, like come to you with time. I will uh, arrange that intraday. Session okay uh, with Energizer. Probably we can do it in some big day on the night. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, this meeting is. Hello. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, that was so sad. <laughs> like the way it ended. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So I did not know this. I would have bought Zoom before coming otherwise. But yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I hope everybody is here. So, uh, any other questions? Uh, no, when you were talking about sorry. Go ahead, or someone go ahead. else talking. Okay. 
my voice was reverbing sorry i was asking that uh, like uh, when you can see after 7 8 days that okay the market has been ranging but uh, mm-hmm. when do you usually see the shift in the market like if it's trending or ranging like how do you spot it uh that is that comes to okay you're talking about the trend of the day right like how to determine it uh, of the day and of uh, like the general like on a daily chart also daily chart to uh, is pretty easy to recognize you can just see for higher low higher highs higher lows right uh, so you what time frame are you looking for in daily charts so like if you if i say over a, a, like what i consider as a good time frame is if i'm looking at uh, any chart i will see at least like a 50 candles to determine the overall trend so i would say nifty is in a pretty bullish trend even now okay like even though we have had some murky days i would still call it a very bullish trend because this is not really comparable to all of this right okay so yeah uh, the same goes for 5 minute chart but 5 uh, minute chart uh, now again it comes down to value right uh, you don't care the 5 minute chart what the 5 minute chart was on this day when you're trading this day unlike the daily chart right so yes uh when when you're analyzing 5 minute chart it comes more of the more more of it down to like you know and uh, finding out where the market is going to go from the first few candles if you can do that so there are I, in the next session i'll take i'll give i'll give a strategy for this only so the ranging market strategy that i have is basically used to determine whether the market will be a trending day or a ranging day if it is a trend i don't care about the trend okay so uh, and if it is a ranging day uh like i want that i want to know that because ranging then i'll have a plan so even in a if you know it's a trending day you can do some stuff there uh, but that's what i'll explain in the next session how to build strategies for that so uh, we'll see the we'll analyze so like this day was pretty clear that it will be a down trending day but uh, right now if i explain it to you guys you will uh, there will be this thing that it's easy to tell now kind of stuff right so uh, since we have the chart in front of us so i will try to uh, get some like get okay, explain the strategy from the scratch and how to build it and to see uh, using the first few candles what kind of a day it will be okay all right uh anything else any other question i guess that's all of the questions then uh okay so one thing i want to consider uh, like uh talk about is uh, apart from all of this is how to uh, a lot of traders uh, if you do intraday they they tend to blow accounts okay uh, i i don't really like it like uh, so i i just want to share a system that you can have to create a fail safe okay never actually so what i really suggest to young traders especially is that never attempt to do just one thing like ju- just don't do swing trading just don't do options intraday just don't do options position just don't do long term do a bit of everything okay because diversification in any way is good at least like if the markets are falling like uh, they f- fell in covid if you were just a long term investor you would have panicked but if you were doing everything you would have been fine because whatever you lost there you would have made up made up somewhere else and make the profits flow from the lowest time frame to your highest time frame so what i mean by that is so i will have a capital for uh, just a second guys yeah hello yeah so um what i mean by that is uh, like so what i usually do for my my system is i'll have a intraday trading setup the profit of which will go in uh, my two week swing trading the profit of which will go into my six week swing trading strategy the profit of which will go into long term trading strategy long term investment strategy so if you make profits flow like this it is very hard to blow an account okay the same way like let's say uh, if you had a bad day in intraday and you uh, like were short of money in your intraday account you make it flow back so you make the six week a uh, six six week swing strategy play back into two week swing strategy and take the money from there so a system like this is good to like manage your account in general someone i think it's why not yeah the other guy lol why not yeah yeah, yeah uh, i just uh, handed out a mute there so 
Okay. All right. So that's what uh, I'm setting up a system like this where uh, profits get invested in the long term. And if you're in a loss, you have to pull back from the long term procedures. Will help you. Uh, you could use Google Meet for session. Sir. Okay. Yeah, fine. Thanks, Sahil. Uh, so that will help you uh, limit your account because you know how much you're actually pulling back from your long term investments. So uh, if I use that system and if anybody is having, okay, I don't want to dwell on it much if nobody here has problem managing accounts, but if there are problem managing accounts in general, where you think you're blowing up too much money, then uh, I can take a session on that too. That also is based on requirement. Okay. So if anybody needs that, they can mention it in the chat. Okay. But this is the general system you should have actually have something like this, even if you don't have it now. Like diversify among different time frame of uh, investing and make it like push profits into that if you're successful in the smaller time frame. Okay. So, yes. uh, so oh, yeah, tell me. Do you convert? Do you ever convert your swing trading position to long term just so you don't have to book losses? No. Okay. No. So, uh, like that is a strict no actually. So, uh, I used to do that like when I was very young so uh like back in 2014-15 i used to like i will buy a stock and it will go south it will go down like 20 percent okay and then i'll be like this is a long-term investment for me now but uh, that <laughs> actually okay so uh that actually is uh okay account handling cool uh so it's actually bad because if an if a stock is going down 20 percent it has to go more than 20 percent to recover okay and like think of it from your perspective if you see a stock which is we just crashed 20%. Will you buy it? No, right. And no. that's other investors too. Right. So like then they're, they're not idiots to buy it again, right? So and based on that fear or that uh, hope that it will recover, we uh, we keep on like we'll keep sticking to uh, like the hope and that money will be wasted in that stock, the rest of it. So a good example is my uh, some of my friends who traded during COVID. Okay, so COVID, uh, a lot of my friends were into equities mostly, like people who don't see the charts daily, but they like stock market, they'll just dump it into equities sometimes. So COVID cash happened and they all held, okay, so they uh, they all held their portfolios till it recovered, okay. But uh, like when I, I sold around 40% of my portfolio in Feb because of COVID, but even my portfolio crashed like everybody's. And I pulled almost all of my money out because I saw the opportunity for multiple swing trades to the top, which can make me more rather than recover what I had already invested. Right. So right now their stocks are, some of them boom, some of them are just back to where they started. Right. Some of them are not even that. Some of them are heavy in PVR that is still in a loss, but they're still holding it. Like if my point is, for, for example, take PVR. Okay. PVR before COVID was around 20, in the 2000s, it crashed to 900. Okay, so some of my friends are still holding PVR, even though it is back to 1400, they're in a loss. But if they would have sold it and bought a significant holding at that time in PVR, they would have made some profit there, right? Given the fact that PVR was highly undervalued at that time and it was a temporary right. blip. So uh, at least we know it would recover to some point. So those kind of things, uh, like you have to find psych uh, like psycho uh, that psychological voice inside you. Like you entered for, a, this is why trading systems are there. Like this is why I follow trading systems. If, if it is a loss, I book it and I move on. Okay. That helps in, you know, managing my account and managing my money. So uh, that's, that's the kind of thing I want to cover actually. So account handling, I'll uh, actually try to arrange a session too. Okay. Uh, probably we can talk about this more there. Any other doubts? I guess that will be it then. Uh, so, all right, guys. Thank you for joining. Uh, I you. hope you took something out of this. Uh, like, I know it was like, uh, I, I'm not really like great at pacing myself, but uh, I hope everyone got a thing or two. And any more doubts, you can ask me. Uh, what I'll advise you to do over the next few uh, days is try to look for premises and try to try to get a strategy going. Like, because uh, till I'm here in this group, uh, I can at least help you identify or I can point you to some indicators that you can, that can uh, use, uh, track what you want to track, right? So uh, try to identify some premises, come up to me, like tell me if you want to help in exploring a premise, we'll sit together, we'll ideate, uh, we'll get a strategy going for that. So, and see like if you can convert it to something by the end of the month, okay? All right, uh, cool then. Uh, see you around guys, bye-bye.